Well, the communication signal from indoor to outdoor unit is produced through optocouplers. Why? Because we need long cables, which means that they will handle high voltages. And since the communication has to go from one microprocessor to another, to make that communication between high voltages and the processors, we need optocouplers that divide the area and do not produce any damage in case of a short circuit in the communication cable. That is why you will always find two optocouplers very close to the communication signal, placed just in the opposite position of each other. Notice that here we have a LED on the right, and on the other side of the optocoupler we have it on the left. There is always some voltage reduction resistor, diodes to prevent the flow of electrons from returning in the direction we do not want, and some filter capacitors. On this side we also have resistance, capacitor, and another diode. And notice that on the other side of the optocouplers we already have the tracks that will take us directly to the most complex part of the circuit, which eventually leads us to the microprocessor. The microprocessor communicates with another microprocessor, indoor and outdoor unit, through those optocouplers. This is the indoor unit. If the communication circuit fails, we have to check these optocouplers, these diodes, and these resistors, as you already know, and replace them. And the outdoor unit is exactly the same. Only that the outdoor unit is usually a bit more complex. Notice that here we have the pin where the communication cable is placed. We have some diodes, resistors, and on the other side, we already have the optocouplers we were talking about. They are mounted in an SMD way. They are mounted superficially. Their terminals do not pass through to the other side. But you can use the same optocouplers. What you have to do is cut the thinner terminals. And you can place them at these points, replacing the originals if they are damaged. They are a little smaller, but it does not matter. You can place, for example, the PC817. In the case of the diodes, you need to check their value, the resistors too, and the capacitors that are not in a short circuit. Well, this is how we are going to test, measure and replace the components that are involved in the communication. What else do we have to do? Very important, follow the tracks. We always say the same thing, Follow the tracks, always, no matter how long they are. Look at this case. We cross jumpers. We go around here outside, look at the turn we are making. And here we will only be reaching the microprocessors. So, go over the tracks, follow the tracks, because they are cut and the communication stops and we replace components and even want to replace the board, but we forgot to follow the tracks. It is like a cut cable. Please, let's follow the tracks in this part of the circuit. I will also show you another board from another brand so you can see how the components dedicated to communication are. Here we have a slightly more complex board. Here we have the red communication cable, filtering coils, a PTC which is a small ceramic that opens with excess temperature, which you know, because we were talking in the sensor section, resistor, filtering capacitors, also a polyester capacitor, two diodes, and two optocouplers. The same in this case, we also have tracks that go from the optocouplers to the microprocessor. Let's see the indoor board of the same model. Communication cable, PTC, resistor, two diodes, one Zener diode, three resistors, capacitors, and optocouplers. Main component, always one on one side and the other on the other. Here we see the mark at point one and the mark at point one. These are the components responsible for communication. 
If you find any problems, you need to check all of these pieces. I will show you a measurement on a working team as you would do at the customer's home. We will measure with the multimeter between S and N. Directly from the outside, we can see if the communication is working or not. We have the same values that we saw just now on the test bench, 15, 4, 20, 15, 15, 4, 20, 15, and constantly a voltage that goes up and down, up and down. Always test between N and S. Well, these are the components that we will find in the signal communication part. In the next video, I will explain some more technical data and to keep in mind about these communication circuits. Please leave a comment if you have any questions.